So actually, I um, recently found the Lord, and I'm here to convert all of you. <laughs> Alright, let's pray. That's a lie. <laughs> Maybe some spontaneous songs will happen. We'll see. You never know. Sometimes that happens around here. Okay. So, yes. For anyone who doesn't know, this is Jack and Glenn. Woo! All right. So we're going to get started just talking about how you were brought up. Were you brought up religiously? Yes, I was brought up very religiously. First of all, I want to say thank you guys for coming. There's a lot more people here than I expected, which is cool and also kind of nerve-wracking because I've never done anything like this before. Normally, it's just me in a room by myself with a camera, and I'm just, you know, I can screw up as many times as I want and cut it out and edit it. This is not so forgiving, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this. So, And after, if you guys have questions, you can ask me anything, and we're going to hang out and talk and have fun. So laid back and relaxing. Right? I'm telling this to myself so I can learn. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So was I brought up really yeah, I was brought up very religious actually. I remember even from kindergarten through senior year in high school I went to a Catholic school. So that was uh, a pretty heavy indoctrination going on there. My parents were religious. Um, my dad is more Protestant, my mom is more Catholic and since I was raised living with my mom, I went to Catholic school and did all of that. And I have tons of stories growing up and things that were part of our curriculum that made me more religious. And I was actually a Bible thumper for a little while, which is kind of surprising to a lot of people. But it was something that, you know, it, was, it felt important to me because that's how I was brought up. And I'm going to try to kind of explain how that happened. Um, when I was little, you know, I was very into Christmas and stuff. And I remember one year, it was like second grade, we had a, a little competition and it was like art class. And I actually have always sucked at drawing things. Um, but I wanted to do a really nice Christmas picture. Everybody's doing like Christmas trees and Santa Claus and you know all these presents and red and green and candy canes and you know sparkles and rainbows and I decided to do the nativity scene. So I had the baby Jesus in a manger. Does somebody want to let him in? Yeah. So. You're late. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so I had baby Jesus in a manger and I had Mary and Joseph and all these people and you know I had the wise men and the animals and I went all out and I had the North Star and in as good a cursive as I could do over it I had keep Christ in Christmas in big letters and I see that bumper stickers all over the place you know my mom still has it somewhere I think she's got a pile of all my crappy artwork but that's just kind of an example of how important that kind of stuff was to me I mean we had all kinds of stuff like that um, one time on Easter this is gonna sound really weird and almost sadistic I think it's kind of fucked up now that I go back and think about it um, but we had, uh, for Easter, they had these wooden crosses pre-made for all the kids in my class. And I was, I was maybe 10, and the, the crosses were about this big and this wide. And the first day of our class, this was broken up into two days, a very serious project. The first day we went in, we had this big, giant picture of Jesus on the cross, right? But there was no cross, it was just Jesus. And we had to color him in, and we even had, like, red paint, right, that we were supposed to use for the, that's weird, right, that's weird. So, like, we're drawing, we're coloring out our little Jesuses and putting red paint on him, which is really weird. Thinking of ten-year-old kids, you know, okay, class, now draw the blood everywhere. So, that's what we had to do. And, um, so then they took all of our paintings, cut them out, and laminated them. And the next day, they took them and gave it back to us, and they gave us the crosses and these little nails, and we had to actually, like, nail our little laminated Jesus onto the cross, which, you know, a lot of, like, I felt uncomfortable with it, because, you know, when you're a kid, you, you give certain emotions to things, like pictures that you draw, or like Barbies, I was obsessed with Barbies when I was little, or, you know, you have a stuffed animal, and you, you give it a name, and you have this emotional connection to it, you know, and not that I had an emotional connection to my laminated Jesus, but, you know, still it was something I drew, and it, you know, looked like a person, and I didn't want to sit there and jam nails through it. You know, that's kind of that's kind of a weird thing psychologically for you to do as a kid. I remember there were other kids in the class, too. A lot of girls would cry. You know, they're like, no, teacher, don't make me do it. I don't want to hurt him, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, then they were like, well, this is what the Jews did to Jesus. The least you could do is, you know, nail it on this little cross. So I still have that somewhere. My mom probably saves that, too. I've got my little laminated Jesus. I mean, that just kind of goes to show you the kind of stuff that I, I did in class growing up. So that was all throughout my childhood. We had church on Wednesday, we had church on Sunday. Um, you know, we had Bible class. If you want to call it Bible class, I mean Catholic school, right? So you don't really read the Bible, it's more, if any of you guys are, have been raised Catholic, you know it's more of the catechism of the Catholic Church, more than, you know, actually reading the Bible. So we did that, I had an hour of that every single day. Also in high school, I had an hour of that. So 
Bible stuff all the time, Catholic stuff all the time. Um, my parents split up when I was, was pretty young. I'm sure a lot of you guys know that if you watch my videos, but I was about four years old when they split up, but the divorce took several years, and it was like a horrible thing. Um, and my mom, I guess whenever you're Catholic, you have to, not only do you get a divorce legally, but you have to get an annulment so that the Catholic Church approves of this separation, which is nice. Um, so my mom didn't do that because the divorce already took several years and it was just a pain in the ass and like both both parties have to participate and my dad wasn't Catholic and he's like, this is stupid, I don't want to do it, which is understandable because it is stupid. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so they had all these kinds of problems so she never actually went through and got the annulment. Um, and apparently whenever you don't do that, you're not supposed to get a cracker, right? You're not supposed to get communion in the Eucharist. So she would do that anyway. She'd show up at church on Sunday with me and we would sit there and my mom would go around and get the Eucharist and my teachers would pull me aside and they'd be like, you do realize that this is wrong. This is a sin. Your mom is, you know, sometimes they would throw hell in there, but a lot of times they were just, you know, they were nice. They just said your mom's a bad person, you know. <laughs> um, so that was, you know, that's weird to do. Like, I mean, I just like, whenever I think of how I was, it's not so much how I was raised. And I feel bad a lot of times complaining about it because honestly, we didn't live in a very nice neighborhood. We didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up. So... At the school I went to, my mom, you know, busted her ass to put me into a nice school, to a Catholic school, because she wanted me to be safe. She wanted me to have a good education, and yeah, she was Catholic, and that was a church we went to, but I don't want to sound like I'm not appreciative, because it was, you know, what she thought was the best thing to do, and it was nice. I got a better education and all of those things. But there was a lot of, you know, behind-the-scenes stuff that she probably didn't know about. Like, she probably didn't, you know, know that they were telling me that she was a bad person or that... Well, she knew we were nailing Jesus' crosses, but that was cute, apparently. Um, but, you know, some stuff like that she didn't really know or think was a bad thing, you know, because it's everybody's doing it. It seems like a, they're teaching the kids a good lesson, right? Um, so, yeah, I guess that's just giving an example of how I was brought up with it. I was, I was in the um, Christmas play a few times. I was a sheep one year. One year I was the angel. I think the, the one in the center was like, Behold, I bring you tidings of great justice. I don't know how it goes. But that was me with the little halo. I remember... I remember making my wings with my mom, like it was this big thing. So I mean, like, when you think of stuff like that, it becomes kind of sentimental to a degree because it's, you know, it's your life, it's how you were raised and those things become important to you. So part of, of breaking away from religion, you feel like you're letting go of all of those things and it, it kind of hurts. I was also a very imaginative when I was a kid. I believed I had all kinds of imaginary friends and I believed like Peter Pan was my best friend. and. <laughs> Yeah, this is embarrassing. No, I like Santa Claus. I believed in him. Um, I had with the Tooth Fairy. I believed in that. Um, whenever I found out all that stuff wasn't real, I was pissed off. You know, I was like, Mom, why, why did you lie to me? You know, and now I think back on it, it's like, well, it was fun. You know, as a kid, if I had kids, you know, Santa Claus, that's a fun thing, right? Um, but at the time, I was really pissed, you know, because I had to let go of something that was so important to me. Um, and I guess kind of I felt the same way whenever I was letting go of religion at a much older age. And it's kind of shitty because like I talk to a lot of people who are atheists now and they say that, oh, I was, you know, 15, I was 10, you know, whenever I let it go and when, <clears throat> I was 21, <laughs> you know, or at least that's whenever I, I started thinking about it. So it's, it's um, kind of, I mean, I was so heavily indoctrinated and I, I believed it and I went to high school, I went to Catholic high school, I had religion class once a week um, so that was fun. Um, that was on the weekend. That was separate from the one we already had to have Catholic class every day at my school. Um, so that was fun. I, um, I was always very shy when I was a kid. I was kind of the kid that was picked on and finally I, um, in middle school I kind of stopped giving a shit so much about what people thought and I got kind of mad and I kind of developed this little like, not rebellious, but kind of like I, I like to piss people off, you know, because I'm like people just pick up me all the time, just pick at me. Like I remember one, one situation there was a, a girl, and uh, she, I don't know why she was being mean that day. I mean, kids are mean, right? They don't always have a, a reason, but she got in my face, and she was like, God doesn't love you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's nice. And I didn't really get upset, because I thought it was ridiculous. Like, who are you to tell me that God, I mean, how do you, do you have this, like, conversation with God? He's like, oh, by the way, that girl in your class, I don't love her. <laughs> you know, I, just, I thought that was ridiculous, so I was like, okay, well... That's nice, teacher. Um, you know, so I was a little rat that day because I wanted to see her get in trouble, and she did. Um, you know, because, you know, no one tells me that God doesn't love me. <laughs> so pissed off. But, I mean, actually, that, if you think about it, you know, a kid telling me 
that God didn't love me is kind of the same as what a lot of adults do today, right? You know, they go and they, they tell you, oh, you are homosexual. God doesn't love you. Or they'll say something, you know, along the lines of, who hates the sin but loves the sinner, right? My favorite line. You know, they make up what God thinks because it's their own bias. So whatever their biases are happen to also be conveniently God's biases. So that was this little girl. She's probably doing that now at the Westboro Baptist Church. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's um, I kind of, I got fed up with it after a while. I was like, you know, damn it, people are being picky, you know, they're just rude. So I kind of developed this, like, mm, confrontational side. Like, I just like debating people. Like, really, you think you could be mean to me? Well, let's, let's have an intellectual conversation and see what happens then. Um, so also part of that was that I was always told when I was little that I was dumb, that I was slow. My teachers wanted me to take ADD medication. Um, they were like, you know, this girl, she's not paying attention in class, she's fidgety, she's just all over the place. Um, you know, and they, they tried to hold me back a grade, and my mom just got in their face, and she was a very defensive mom. She was like, oh, you don't mess with my kid. So she went in there and, and um, never put me on any kind of medication or anything. She's always really good about that. But I mean, I think between that and between getting made fun of all the time, like just combined to make me want to just be smart. You know, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to be smart. I'm going to study and work really hard. And in high school, that's what I did. So I would do all these debates, and uh, I joined the debate team, which was a lot of fun. And I had a lot of fun just, you know, owning people. I was like, yeah, this feels awesome. Except for then, back then, my debates were more of, uh, like, I was very conservative <laughs> and very Christian. So I would be like, yeah, death penalty, woo! Um, <clears throat> Pro-life, woo! woo. Um, yeah, yay, that's, that's how I was. Um, but at least I learned through that how to, you know, be aggressive and debate things, so that was fun, um, but unfortunately it got me in a lot of trouble in religion class because I started at some point realizing that a lot of it was just terrible, the stuff that they were telling me, so I would, um, you know, ask the teacher questions like, um, really, if you're not baptized, you're going to hell? Like, what if you're a kid, you know, like, what if there's a kid that walks out, you know, and gets hit by a bus and their parents were atheists or something like that, you know, horrible, horrible atheists. And, um, and the kid dies, like, and they were never baptized, you know, half of the teachers at my school would be like, well, Jesus loves the little children, so it's okay. But the other half were like, well, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, that child's going to hell. So, uh, I would, I would fight them. I'd be like, that's really stupid. And they'd be like, <clears throat> what did you say? I'd be like, yeah, that's, that's kind of horrible for you to say that. And then, you know, my best friend growing up ever since third grade, he didn't come out until after high school, but I always knew he was gay. So I would always be very defensive over that. That's the one thing I can say, at least even though I was conservative and brainwashed and very, you know, very, very religious and um, I was, you know, a Bible thumper. <laughs> so at least I could say I was never... Like, I would never discriminate against homosexual. I was always very for it. You know, like, my friend was gay, so I'd get really, really defensive when teachers would talk about that because, you know, he was a good friend of mine. So that got me in a lot of trouble in high school. And then in college, it was really great because all my life I had been sheltered. And then I finally get to this place where it's not just, you know, people who are pretty much the same as me. You know, um, people of the same age, same religion, you know, pretty much the same ethnic backgrounds. Like, there was no diversity pretty much for me growing up, which was sucks, you know. You don't want to be around the same kind of pe people, like, all the time. You want to experience new people. So whenever I went to college, USF, uh, University of South Florida is where I went, they have a very heavy Islamic um, student body. So I became very good friends because I was into medicine and I was studying to be, you know, pre-med. I wanted to go to be a doctor. So um, one of my good friends was a Muslim and we would hang out a lot and I started to get really close to this girl and my um, a lot of people I knew that were religious had a problem with it they were like um, <clears throat> you know she's she's got the thing you know going on and uh, she's uh, I was like yeah I know you know she's a good friend of mine so I would get um, heat from that I would get you know negative comments about my friend who was gay and I just like I kind of reached a point where I was like this is so stupid you know why can't I why can't I know these people just because they're different so I would get into these like deep conversations with her about religion, and she was very, very, very convinced that she had all the answers, and that she was right, and I was very convinced that I had all the answers, and that I was right. Um, but we both kind of were, were more moderate, I guess you could say, we're like, well, hopefully we'll both see each other in whatever kind of heaven is there. So we were nice about it, but that is a big thing that kind of started to get me thinking. You know, not only was I tired of all the, you know, you can't know this person or that person because they're a different faith, because they have this type of lifestyle, I was fed up with that. 
And then, you know, talking to her and seeing how sure she was and how sure her friends were and her family that they had the answers and their, like, their religion was right. Why? Why? How do I know, you know, that I'm right? Why? I just happened to be born, you know, we hear this from doctors all the time, I just happened to be born in a Christian family. Had I been born, you know, her sister, I would think the same way that she does. So how do I have any validity with what I believe? So that made me question a lot of things, too. So that's like the very, very long story of, of my religious upbringing. So there you have it. Very, very heavily indoctrinated. And uh, probably the experiences that I had and the people that I met changed me a lot, at least. I wasn't, uh, that is not what made me turn into an atheist um, or even an agnostic, but it did get me like distancing myself in some way from religion, just like starting to kind of hate it. So it was the beginning of the end in a way. <laughs> That's a very long answer <laughs> to one question. <laughs> All right, so you mentioned that your family is super religious. So how did your friends or your family react to you coming out as an atheist? Oh, man. Um, it, well, not, not good. It was a very long process. Um, do you hear the, okay, so I don't know if you can pick up the camera, but there's an ambulance. This reminds me. Uh, in Catholic school, we would always do the sign of the cross when we hear, I don't know if you guys did that, but I always did that. And sometimes I'm still tempted. <laughs> but it's like, oh wait, no, stop. It's not doing anything. Um, but no, they did not, they did not react well to it. Um, it's better now because it's been going on for a while. But at first, the initial shock of it was painful for them. I mean, they experienced this, it's not that they were mad, because I can handle mad. You know, when your parents get mad at you, that happens all the time. You can handle that. Yeah, my mom's mad at me again. But it was more of like a hurt and a disappointment. And that's really hard to see from people you love and, and you know, family and stuff. So that was really tough. But yeah, it's better now, kind of. But that does not help that I, I'm on YouTube, by the way. Because not only, not only am I, like, you know, not a believer, um, but I'm the opposite in a very loud way. So it's just... It's not cool. <laughs> they, they try to hide it. Like I'm like, don't watch my videos, but then of course they, they do it anyway. So. <laughs> so you mentioned earlier that college kind of opened you up in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. but what aspect or incident in your educational history has most influenced your beliefs? Uh, um, I mean, I talked a lot about the, the diversity of meeting new people and stuff, but I, my major at USF was biomedical sciences. So I learned a lot about biology and medicine and evolution, which was the kicker. Um, you know, that, that whole you know, science explaining things that I had previously given credit to God for. Um, but even that wasn't what did it. Like, it helped later having that background because I could understand science and it made a lot more sense to me. Um, but really that's not what made me lose faith in God. I was still, I was a biomedical sciences major God lover. <laughs> so that was me. All right, so kind of moving to a different subject. Um, today, studies show that atheists are the least trusted minority group in the US <coughs> because they have no religion to you know, dictate their morals. So what would your response be to someone who claims that atheists lack morality? We do. The <laughs> <laughs> Englishman. So, yeah, we do. We, we, I, I, you know, Killed a couple babies this morning and <laughs> ran over an old lady trying to cross the street. Now, um, I mean that's ridiculous. First of all, I think that that statistic is like underrepresenting how many people are actually atheists. Because I mean, I'm sure I don't know how many of you guys have opened about it, but I'm sure some of you still aren't. And if you are, then I'm sure there was a point where you were just like, yeah, I was. Yeah, sure, mom, I'm you know Catholic. I'll be Catholic. Sure, mom, I'm, I'm what you know whatever. Um, so if somebody asks you, what's your, what's your religion? It's almost like you answer instinctively for more of a cultural thing. Like, you know, what religion are you? Oh, Catholic. But, but you don't really believe it. So I feel like that 20% might be way below what it actually is. But, I mean, as far as the morality thing, I think that's ridiculous. I mean, the, where, where, where else would you get your... I was talking to Richard Dawkins about this when I met him a couple weeks ago. And he's like, we live in the year 2013. So we are... Well, our morality is based on the you know, societal constructs, the things that are in the year 2013. We are 2013 millions, is what he said. So, I mean, and I, I think that that's true. I mean, if you actually took your morality from the Bible, then there would be lots of more genocide and infanticide and rape and misogynistic viewpoints. You know, uh, Leviticus actually says that homosexuals should be killed. 
Um, you know, so if people actually took their morality from the Bible, I think that uh, they'd be a lot less moral than what they claim to be. But they have the cherry picker edition of the Bible, and you know, so you give me the bad news first, and then I can have the good news after, and I'll feel better. But I feel like whenever it comes to the Bible, people are like, just give me the good news, and everything else doesn't exist. It's just not even there, which I think is ridiculous. You know, and then there's a lot of contradictions in the Old Testament. You know, not wearing this two different cloths, or eating shellfish, or you know, working on the Sabbath. Just ridiculous things that no one actually follows. They, like, but it's they actually didn't kill a Jew. They actually just killed some random person that was picking up sticks. Okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Um. <coughs> So I feel like morality is, is definitely something that's more intrinsic, and it's, it's not based on the Bible because of those things that I just said. The Bible is full of, of bad things. If we actually followed it, it would not be, it would not be pretty. So They like to take white out over all the bad stuff and replace it with secular morality, and they give no credit to the secular part. They just attribute it all to God, and they're like, oh, but, but it says not to kill people. I mean, if you went out and you asked for people, like, would you be out killing people right now if you didn't have a holy book telling you to do so? And they're like, well, I, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yes, yes, you do know. You would not be out murdering people. <clears throat> Otherwise, I would be. Why, are, you know, why aren't we all out murdering people right now? I mean, where do we get our morality? I don't know. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Plus, morality definitely predates the Bible. No, there was nothing before the Bible ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... What is the most hurtful comment you have ever received <laughs> on or off YouTube on account of your atheism? And how do you handle dissenters or trolls? I kill them. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, uh, the, okay, well, I mean, I don't really care what people say about me on the internet. I've been doing it too long. I've been on YouTube for two and a half years. I actually started off YouTube by making animal rights videos and vegetarian videos, which I haven't done in a long time just because... I don't really, I'm not as much of an activist as I used to be. Maybe I should change and, and do more of that. But, um, And that, by the way, was also a very sore point with my family. Whenever I told them I was not going to eat meat, they were like, what? <laughs> what is wrong with you? So that was hard. Imagine telling them that I'm not a Christian anymore. That was, you know, if they can't handle my, you know, dinner choices, that was a, a hard blow. But, um, yeah, I am. Um, I've been on it on YouTube for two and a half years, and at first I was like, oh, this person said they didn't like my shirt. And, you know, like, you know, especially being a girl, it's hard to sometimes be on YouTube. You know, because guys never really care. They're like, oh, whatever, this person's an idiot. But with me, I was more like, oh, okay, they don't like me. And, like, I was self-conscious. And then after a while, I was like, okay, this is stupid. I don't really care. And then the comments started getting worse and the grammar errors. And a lot of times you can't even understand what they're trying to say. So like, okay, well, um, I'll just ignore that comment. Um, and a lot of times people, they just want to get a reaction out of you. So if you respond to them, they get even more frustrating, which sometimes is fun because I'm a, like a, a pretty good at trolling now. <laughs> so I've, I've you know, perfected my trolling experts on uh, YouTube. But yeah, so I really don't care anymore. I met a lot of people who also make videos and we all kind of talked and kind of realized that everybody gets the same crap. Um, so when people send me things, you know, I hate you, it's like, oh, you know. That's too bad. But as far as like hurtful comments, I think probably the only ones that ever affect me anymore are, are ones that come from people that I, I know personally. Um, like, and it's not even the really hateful ones. It's the more like sad, you know, hurt, disappointed. Because I was there. I was in their shoes. I, I know their thought processes. I know that they're genuinely scared and worried for me. So, you know, how do you approach that? How do you, how do you, you know, tell someone that loves you, you know, that you, to leave you alone when they, when they really just want to help you, when they're really just worried about you, you know? So that's, that's probably the toughest thing. But as far as troll comments, I don't really care about those at all. Do you have a certain one in mind that's like the weirdest comment? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, wow, I could, this would take up the rest of the night. Um, I mean, I get lots of people trying to save me. I get lots of people trying to tell me that, in fact, Islam is the best, you know, you should convert to it. It's like, have you seen anything that I ever said? Why would you send me that? Um, you know, so I get a lot of people trying to save me. I get a lot of people threatening me with hell. Um, but the, the worst ones are like the, the stalkers. Like there are a couple people who have sent death threats. I, I recently moved from Florida and 
a couple people found out where I lived down there and took a picture of the front of my house and sent it to me on YouTube. They were like, I, this, you, you live at here. The, the grammar's always bad. Um, so this you house. Okay. Um, and it was actually where I lived, so I was like, oh shit. Um, so that was not cool. Those are pretty scary. Um, I get a lot of people, even last week somebody was like, found your car, you know, in Florida, since I know where you live in Florida, and I found your car, and the next time you start it, you're going to blow up. Okay, kaboom. That's what they had at the big, big letters at the bottom. Kaboom! Um, but I don't live there anymore, so I'm like, I can ignore that. But now it's like, mm, it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary. Some of the things people send me, um, I get a lot of very sexual comments, which I should probably not say right now, because it'll make everyone feel uncomfortable, which I'm being nice, because normally I really like making people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but um, one guy in particular recently um, has a fetish, and a lot of you, you pointed out to me before, <laughs> Um, that I'm taller than you thought I was. I'm actually 5'9 and a half. A lot of people think that I'm much shorter than that. And um, this guy, I don't know, I, it's, it's weird. I should post this link on my Facebook so you guys can see it. Um, but I haven't yet because I'm afraid that giving him attention will just make it worse. But he's got this weird obsession with arms. Yeah, like, yeah, arms. Um, so he's like, the, the length, um, I'll show you, like the length between your elbow and your wrist. It, like, if his is shorter than that, he freaks out. He's like, all I want, all I want is for my arm to be longer than hers. So he took a still, yeah, he took a, he took a screenshot of one of my, the Evolution versus God and Atheist review that I did, uh, where I, I hold a banana, right, because I'm making fun of Ray Comfort. And I'm holding up a banana, and he actually goes and gets a banana for comparison, and is like, holds it up and measures it with him, and he's like, by my estimates, via this banana, I can tell this girl's about 5'10". I was like, oh, holy shit, he's a half inch off. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's kind of scary. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's got like, and it's, I'll post the video, but it's, it looks terrible. I'm making the worst derp face ever because I'm like, <laughs> that's the screenshot that he decided to take while he's talking about me the whole time. So he's got the camera, and he's like holding it, and it's like all shaky and terrible audio. He's like, this girl's probably about 5'10, and all I want for my arm to be longer than her is a distance from it's just driving me nuts. And then, and then it cuts to him holding up a, he, like him holding up a banana with, with the screenshot of me next to him, and he's like trying to show it, but he's got like he's just this white shirt on and it's got stains and it's all ripped up and stuff. And, and you guys just makes me want to put a fucking gun to my head, and he has a gun in his hand. <laughs> it, just, it makes me want to just put a fucking gun to my head and pull the trigger. And I'm watching this video like, oh, You're like this guy better not ever find me because I'm dead. Actually, and he's sent me a lot of, of threatening messages that he's going to cut my arm off because then it would be shorter than his, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, he actually lives in LA somewhere too, so I was like, hmm, that's fun. So yeah, I mean, lots of lots of very strange comments that, that I'll get. So I'll post that video later so you guys can all see what I'm saying. <laughs> But the arm, arm dude, arm dude, that's the top of the cake. <laughs> Can't imagine. Can't it's driving you guys nuts right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've been talking a lot about atheism and theism. Would you ever date a theist? We all want to know. I mean, yeah, I, I saw, yeah, that, that question. Um, I mean, I think it'd be stupid for me to say no, because you never, I, like, just what I said before, there's a lot of people who are, you know, label themselves as such and they're really not. Um, if they were really hardcore, absolutely not. If they were going around saying, evolution's a lie! No, I don't think I can handle that. Um, if they were trying to save me all the time or telling me that I was going to hell, that would just drive me nuts. If they got offended by what I did, obviously that would work. Um, you know, but if, if they were just, you know, kind of meh about it and did it more for culture and tradition, I guess I could, I mean, if it, you know, if it were the right person, maybe. But I mean, there's a lot of people in LA um, that are like spiritual, you know, they, they speak to, my, my roommate speaks to the universe. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, there's all, all different kinds of things out there and I, you know, if I ruled everyone out in my life that were like that, then there wouldn't be a whole lot of people left. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm very aggressive in my videos and, you know, fight people and, and, and in a way kind of bitchy, um, but I'm really laid back in person, actually. So, um, I think, uh, I don't know. I'd rather not, but I'm not going to rule it out. That's a good question. Okay, so this is the second to last question-ish. Okay, ish. But, so a little fact. Currently, there's only one member of Congress, Kristen Sinema, who openly identifies as non-religious, but 20% of Americans identify as non-religious, mm -hmm. like you were talking about earlier. So 
right now they're the least represented minority in the U.S. So given the number of growing um, Americans who identify as non-religious, how do you see the future of atheism in relation to politics and just in relation to the U.S. in general? It depends. Um, I'm hoping that it gets better. I feel like people are more outspoken now than they ever have been before. I feel like, you know, the gay rights movement has progressed a lot in the last several years, especially now, 16 states have legalized it, which is amazing. Uh, Hawaii, I think, was the most recent, which is exciting. But I feel like it's kind of a similar thing. Like, we're going to have to go through that process of, of it being more open and, and more known. And I think once more people are comfortable saying they're an atheist instead of saying, yeah, I'm Christian, or yeah, I'm Catholic, whatever. You know, if more people are just open about it, then politicians will be more free to admit it if they are too, because right now it's almost like you can't get elected if you admit that you're an atheist. I think actually in some states that's not even allowed. I think Texas you have to have some kind of religion even if it's, you know, not Christianity. You have to believe in something higher, otherwise you can't even run for office. Um, so right now it looks pretty bad, um, but I'm hoping that you know, things like this and, you know, speaking out on the internet or blogs or just talking with your friends about it, or organizations, clubs like this, I feel like more, the more that that happens, the more, you know, it's a domino effect. You know, once more people are open about it, then it won't be so taboo and you'll be able to say that and run for office. But maybe 20 years, 30 years, I don't know. <coughs> uh, hopefully we'll catch up to Europe at some point. <laughs> Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> song out that he the lyrics are really touching hope song you know it oh, yeah. <laughs> um it's i feel like that would answer how i feel about the hope. <laughs> yeah see it's a good song right I'm, I'm, you said i'm allowed to cuss right yeah go for i've already it. done it a couple Should times sure. yeah beep up no 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 no, <laughs> no um yeah don't ever do that. <laughs> just kidding um yeah he's got a song called the pope song and it's like Fuck the motherfucker, he's a total motherfucker. Fuck the motherfucker, fuck the motherfucking Pope. <laughs> if he covered for another motherfucker who's a kitty fucker, fuck him. He's no better than the motherfucking rapist. And if you don't like the swearing, this motherfucker forced from me and reckon it calls moral or intellectual paucity, then fuck you, motherfucker. It's the language one employs when one is fucking pissed at motherfuckers fucking boys. <laughs> it's, it's a great song. Um, and it's from the heart. <laughs> I love Tim Minchin. So yeah, everybody go look him up. He's great. Um, yeah, so that's the, the case. So the new Pope, um, he's better, I guess. And the, and the, like the uh, Benedict was terrible. He was the one who was going over to uh, Africa with all the people in, you know, they had AIDS and he was like, don't use condoms. Don't use condoms because that's a sin. AIDS. So yeah, like, uh, you know, that, that's really bad. Um, that's probably one of the most immoral things. Oh, then there's also the scandal, you know, where they, you know, covered for all the priests who were molesting kids and just relocated them instead of actually making them face the, you know, their actions and deal with it. So that's pretty immoral and that, a lot of that fell on Benedict, but this new pope is a little bit better. Um, he's been questioned a lot about his stance on, um, you know, homosexuality or, you know, contraception and he... Um, I think he pretty much says that he doesn't agree with it, but he's not going to be forceful about it because, you know, hey, it's 2013, people are going to start getting pissed off. So he kind of noticed that and, and uh, moved back a little bit on it. And he said something like, you know, we're looking at the person, not what the person is doing, right? Love the, the person, the sinner, not the sin kind of thing. So he's, he's more open about it. I mean, he's still the Pope, though, so fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Should we open up to other questions? Yeah. Y'all got any questions for me? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, from where you are as an activist right now, mm -hmm. where do you hope to get to as a next level or your ultimate goal in the uh, atheist? My meeting? ultimate goal in the atheist? I don't know. That's a good question. 
Um, YouTube right now is doing pretty well, but a lot of people have been asking me if I will ever write a book one day, and I think that would be pretty awesome. <laughs> so I might, I might go ahead and do that. Um, I might be on Fox in the near future, which would be fun because they don't let you get in a word edgewise. <laughs> the thing is, is they, they are bound to their organization and they have certain you know, rules. They can't say certain things because they're part of this organization. They can't make it look bad, but I don't have anything like that. So I can be like, I don't like you, I don't, I don't know. Um, I can be as unprofessional as I want to be. Um, so I might do that. Um, it'd be pretty sweet if I'd ever end up meeting Bill Maher and doing something with him. But you know, like, do you guys watch The Amazing Atheist too? Yes. Yeah, I'm working on him with a couple for a couple videos now. So that'll be coming out sometime soon. But yeah, all over the place. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, why atheist and not agnostic? I've waited between being spiritual, atheistic, agnostic, and the argument has been posed, which I think is valid to a certain extent, so I'm curious to hear your response about, um, is not saying there is no God just as definitive as saying there is a God, and is not the most honest answer? I don't know. Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, I have a whole video out on, uh, actually, I posted it a long time ago called Why I'm Agnostic. If you look at my very... Uh, first videos, I'm like, I'm a Christian and I don't get mad about this. Um, and then I kind of progressed to agnostic and obviously now I just say atheist. Um, if you have read Richard Dawkins, he's got the scale. I'm sure the, you guys have heard about it. The scale of atheism and he's like, you know, point one below the max to be an atheist because there is that like element of doubt like you were talking about. But I think there's a big difference between saying, I believe there is no God and I don't believe there is a God. I feel like there's a big difference there because saying I believe there is no God is a very definitive like I know there's not a God but saying I don't believe there is a God is just saying I don't have enough evidence to believe that there is one and I feel like that defines atheism because you don't believe in a God but it's not that you're saying you know there's not one you're saying why would I think there is one you know just like why would I think that there's anything else supernatural going on so I guess that's but I mean it makes sense because I was there for a long time I was ag agnostic and now I just feel like uh, I guess I, just because of the way society is and how atheism is just viewed as such a, a negative thing, um, that's what what I am still because I don't believe that there is a God. So why would I say agnostic? I feel like I'm just kind of hiding it and, and afraid to say what it is. You know what I mean? We're not agnostic about fairy, fairies or unicorns. Yeah, that's that's another thing that I'm much a fairyist. A fairyist. <laughs> yes, I'm an a fairyist. A a teapotist. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I feel like, I mean, a lot of people think that there's a lot more to Christianity. I, I think a lot of that is because of the indoctrination. It, it's like, <laughs> I told you, it's like something that I grew up with and it, it was important to me. And it, I felt like I was losing a person in my life whenever I lost religion. It was, it was not easy. It, a lot of people think, you know, oh, you're an atheist. You're just doing that so you can run around and do all these crazy things. It's like, no, not really. It was not the easier road to take. Um, so, yeah, um, agnostic, you can say that, there's nothing wrong with it, but I feel like, um, I feel like that's kind of hiding a little bit. So I like to say atheist just because, like, like what you said, I'm agnostic, I guess, technically agnostic about leprechauns and fairies. And, yeah? Plus, uh, there are tens of thousands of gods that were invented by yeah. humanity. Which one? And, uh, <laughs> that were invented, I mean, just hypothetical uh, ideas, mm -hmm. and when someone is an agnostic, he puts one specific idea on a pedestal and says it's something really special, versus mm -hmm. it's actually not. Yeah, that's true, it's a good point. So agnostic, you're agnostic, I guess, about every religion. I think that's, um, I think it was Dawkins that said, um, everyone's an atheist, except for their own. You know, you're an atheist for every other god that there is, except for whichever one you chose to believe in. So, that's a good point. Any other questions? Yeah? What do you think of uh, the anti-feminism going on among certain members of the atheist community, namely the amazing atheists, <clears throat> the butterfly, and so on? Yeah, the anti-feminism. Um, uh, okay. I am a, I would not call myself a feminist. I'm, I mean, like, I would say that I'm a humanist. You know, I, I value them. Um, so that just goes to show you that um, there's a lot of things that could be viewed as against men, you know, um, that people don't pay any attention to. There was a man recently who was denied treatment for his breast cancer because all the free centers were only open for women who had breast cancer, even though he had the same exact cancer. 
Um, so I feel like there's a lot of things out there that um, men have to suffer through too, to a degree. I mean, I, I guess I could say I'm a feminist. I'm also, you know, I, I fight for everything. I, I fight for animal rights um, and all these kinds of things. So I just feel like, I feel like there is a, a negative connotation in a way applied to feminism because it's exclusionary. Like it, it rules out fighting for men. So I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense. It's not a topic I've talked about before. Um, just because I think it's touchy, because a lot of a lot of people I think are, and there's nothing wrong with it, because there are a lot of things you know that women have to go through, like you know, freaking all the Republicans who want to take away you know contraception, you know, not even abortion. They also want to take away contraception. It's ridiculous. Um, so that's annoying, <laughs> really, really annoying and rude. But at the same time, I, I don't know. There's um, I don't think that T.J. is anti-feminist, the amazing atheist. I'm, I'm good friends with him. I don't think he's against. Feminism. I think he's against radical feminism, and there's a big difference. Negative ones. Yeah, just people who are, are over the top, um, in your face kind of thing. He's had videos where he's addressed those people, um, but yeah, he's a good friend of mine. And he's not a woman hater. You know, actually, uh, he's got another channel that I'm a part of, and he was so happy that I agreed to be a part of it because he's like, everyone else that I have on is a man, a, a guy, you know, and I want to find more women. But honestly, there aren't a lot of girls that are outspoken whenever it comes to these things. So he's got, it's a difficult task to find girls to be a part of the team. And, you know, it's, he gets, you know, people complaining, you know, why are you only using guys? Well, that's because there are only guys available to pick from. So, yeah, I don't think he's anti-feminist. He's just, you know, for equality for everyone. Um, actually, Joss Whedon just had a, uh, a video posted that talked about the, uh, how he hated the word feminist and said it was a terrible word because it's it culturally uh, back too far. We should move on to a genderist <coughs> word that makes it modern and says, hey, anyone that's a genderist, that's wrong. Just like being a racist is wrong. Being a genderist is wrong. Feminist excludes a whole s section of society. Yeah, let's that. just be a gender equality yeah. group instead of having a little Gender equality, yay! <laughs> Anyone? Yeah? What's a recent book on the subject of atheism that you'd really recommend? Okay, so it's a child's book. Uh, I know that uh, Dawkins actually came out with a book called The Magic of Reality, and it's for kids, and this is kind of a sad story. Um, but I, uh, I got it for my little sister, who's 13, and I read it in like two days. Like I blasted through it and I went through and I highlighted it and I made little notes for her to read and I gave it to her and it somehow disappeared. I don't know if someone found it. I'm pretty sure that they were like, oh, Richard Dawkins, that's that guy. And, you know, um, it, it disappeared from the house. But it was pretty cool, actually. So if anybody has, like, younger, you know, kids or somebody that they want to kind of introduce to it, it's, it's nice because it, it's not just something that focuses on Christianity. It focuses on, like, myths in every religion. So it's, it's pretty helpful. I like that one a lot. I mean, that's just the most recent one that I, I went through to give to her, but now it's gone. All my hard work is gone. Sad. Yeah. Um, uh, in the United States, whenever we talk about religious liberty or so on, uh, we always seem to have this automatic default idea that um, the only religion that exists is particularly Christianity, and the only God that exists is Yahweh. Um, the, what do you think of the idea that when people talk about religion, we always exclude other religions um, outside of the Abrahamic faith? I mean, it's stupid. I mean, that's, that's just that's a fallacy that a lot of people fall into. They live in a bubble. They only see their religion. And that's kind of what we were talking about before, you know, uh, being agnostic about, well, you're only agnostic about what? Just Christianity? There's a lot of other things that you could be agnostic about. Um, so that's just, people are, are narrow-minded, and when they're indoctrinated into a certain religion, that's sometimes all they can think about and all they see. So. Yeah? All right, uh, Richard Dawkins claims that uh, child indoctrination is child abuse. Uh, what are your views on indoctrinating children in that way? I do think it's child abuse. I actually recently came out with a video um, entirely about that. Okay. Because there was a girl who um, committed suicide. She was, I think she was 12, um, because her dad had recently passed. And because he was gone, she wanted to see him in heaven. So she wrote her mom a note, you know, hey, miss dad, kind of thing, and killed herself. Um, and I gave lots of examples earlier of, of what I went through as a kid, and I think it was pretty messed up. 
Um, and the fact that this girl believed that she was going to go, you know, float around in the clouds with her dad, she killed herself, and that's really sad. So I think that, yeah, it, it, it messed with me and messed with my mind when I was a kid, and it obviously affected her to the point of killing herself. So I, I do think it is a form of child abuse, for sure. You're not allowed to ask me, you're just totally crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the best way to talk to believers would be if, yeah. like, I feel like a lot of the time they would feel, like, offended or just they're really, like, strong in their, I mean, like, we are strong in yeah. their ways and it's hard to have that conversation without making it an argument. Yeah. Um, are you, it depends on the situation that you're in. If, if, they're, if they're not bringing it up, and you're just in a room and, you know, you don't be like, hey, you're stupid. Um, <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that. Um, so if I were in that situation and no one had brought it up, I think I would not talk about it unless something came up, you know, and they were like, oh, let's say a prayer. I would, you know, it probably wouldn't, you know, um, and then it would get brought up. So it's not like me being intrusive. And that's kind of why I like YouTube. Because no one's, I'm not forcing anyone to watch my videos, you know. They might see it. A lot of people are like, you're pushing your beliefs. I'm like, really? You click play. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's one good thing. So, but, like, yeah, when you're in person, that's why I'm, I'm really just kind of relaxed. And if somebody asks me, then I'll talk about it, kind of uh, just be an example. Um, but a lot of times they do ask you, especially family. And when they know that you aren't a believer, that's the first thing they all want to talk about. Because, like I said before, they want to save you. You know, you're going to hell, I better talk to you now, otherwise you're, you know, damned and they're worried about it, genuinely. Um, so that is actually something that I'm struggling with right now. Why do you have to talk about it so much? You know, they don't understand how I see it as such a positive thing. All they see is, is all the negative, they, they just see it as this horrible thing that I'm doing, but I see it as, you know, obviously a lot different. Um, so whenever they're really aggressive and they attack you, it's kind of hard not to fight back because it's just so easy, you know, it's so easy to be like, well, you're wrong because this, 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 this. Um, but you don't want to do that because it just pushes them away. Um, so I just try to just try to be like, well, this is how I feel. This is why I feel the way that I feel. And it doesn't end well, even if you're nice. You can be as nice as you possibly can and they're still going to cry. You know, they're still going to walk away, be disappointed. Um, so there's really not an easy way. I actually want to talk about this more because <laughs> I'm going to see my family um, in Illinois for Thanksgiving, and I know it's going to get brought up because I haven't seen them in a couple of years, and obviously this has all been a pretty recent development for me. So I know it's going to be something I'm going to have to talk about, and I'm not looking forward to it. Because it's like, there really isn't a, a good way. Because it's something so important to them, you know, it's their identity to a degree. So it's hard to tell them that their whole life is wrong. <laughs> Yeah. What motivates you so much when you've been uh, in this for mm. such a short time and you, uh, you're having uh, this opinion for such a short time? What is your motivation? Well, um, a lot of the things that happened to me when I was growing up made me mad. Um, like I said, I think it's child abuse to a degree. Um, I've seen my friends who are gay um, worry that they're going to get kicked out of school. Um, I've seen them, you know, it just, I mean, I'm a fight for equal rights, too, you know, like the fact that, that gay marriage is still not legal in 34 states is pissing me off, like why? Um, you know, I am a big advocate for animal rights and I'm not a cow, um, so I feel like, you know, you don't have to necessarily be directly affected by something to fight for it either. So I see, I see a lot of negative things from religion, I see, you know, um, and not just, you know, in our country. You know, women are <laughs> taken advantage of in other countries and, you know, treated like objects. There's not women's, I know, I know I was talking about feminism earlier, but still, like, we, there's a lot to fight for, for gender equality, you know, even with, uh, you know, contraceptives and abortion rights and stuff. Like, there's just, it's, it influences politics way too much, way too much. And it gives people a reason to be nasty. And a lot of people say, oh, but there's so many good parts of religion. I'm like, not really, because you can have the good without the bad, you know, like you can have all those good things without religion. So how, when have you ever seen an atheist go out and do something because they were motivated by their atheism to do something bad, you know? It's, it's a lot of crime and a lot of <laughs> terrible things are, are done in the name of God, and I feel like just it influences politics too much, and that's something worth fighting for. <laughs>
speaking of good without the religion, how do you feel about the Sunday assembly? The what? Sunday assembly. I don't know what that is. Uh, no one else knows. Um, it feels true. It, yes, oh, okay. Yeah, I think I actually did hear about that. Um, yeah, I think it's a good thing, honestly. I mean, it's not like you're worshiping. I mean, yeah, because you have to, like, what are we doing now? You know, like, we're getting together and we're talking about this kind of thing, and um, it needs to be done because it's, people don't even know that it's an option sometimes to say that they're an atheist. Um, and people who do say that they're atheists are discriminated against. Like, you can't even run for public office in some states. So... Yeah, I think it's important. And also, what the hell is with tax exempt status? With churches, right? I think we should all start our own atheist church and get tax exempt status. <laughs> just, just to piss off the government, you know? Yeah. Because why not? If they're getting it, why shouldn't we? Like, yeah, we atheist church. Amen. <laughs> Let's get together and pray later. <clears throat> yeah? Um, what, did you have like a specific turning point where you decided that you wanted to be, or were going to be? Yeah, um, well, I mean, all that stuff was, I was talking about before kind of led up to it. But I think the two biggest things is I was already on YouTube and I was already doing you know controversial topics. And because of that, I was searching a lot. Like, oh, what do these other people think? So I came across Dark Matter. I came across The Amazing Atheist. I came across a lot of other YouTube atheists. They made a lot of sense. I read The God Delusion. That was it. I read The God Delusion. <laughs> um, so like all the other things kind of got me thinking. Um, and that's how I became such good friends with TJ, because he really got me thinking about a lot of things. And then whenever I read The God Delusion, I was like, this makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. And before, like, before I was, I was Catholic, and then I was Protestant, because I didn't like the Catholic Church, and I was like, this doesn't feel right. And then I was Protestant for a while, and I was like, this also feels stupid. Um, so finally, whenever I got to this point, it was like the first time I ever felt right. You know, I was, I was finally comfortable. I was like, oh, wow. I never thought I'd get to this point, but this actually makes sense. So, I guess Richard Dawkins, which is why I was so freaking excited to meet him. I was like, ah, you're real. <laughs> so, yeah, it was pretty cool. I have his number in my phone. How badass is that? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> but, um, Sorry, just really quick. Um, I've seen, I've been watching The Young Turks, and they put on, like, these crazy pastors that are, like, saying that global warming is God's answer for, like, yeah, abortion and gay marriage. Yeah, so. clearly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that makes sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that they, yeah, they, it's, it's, it reminds me of people, you know, sacrificing for, you know, a good harvest. Like, they'll just attribute, you know, meaningless things to, and give them meaning when there's none. You know, they think that, you know, how oh, soon only that was because God. You know, so everything is because God. Right. Say anything and then insert because God after and, there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you spoke earlier about you being a child and being indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. It made me think of the opposite. What if your child, what if you taught your child to be an atheist, but there's also the bad thing about that made me think, um, how would the child deal with it at school if the majority of the kids there are religious and they find out that the kid does not believe in God and start bullying him? How would you help that? child that's an atheist you know how would you help him out how would one what advice would you give that yeah, child to deal a, with it that's actually a really good point because i've had people writing me about that recently actually too was it you did you um i mean kids are going to be assholes no matter what um honestly i would i would tell my kid like hey expect this to happen you know don't talk about it if you don't have to um you know don't be rude but just you know exclude yourself from things you don't feel comfortable doing and if they want to do it, then they can do it. You know, like, I, I'm not saying that you need to, to raise your kid an atheist. I'm just, I'm, I would never raise my kid with religion. If they found it on their own at some point and wanted to pursue it, that's their choice. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to force it on them. But, I mean, as far as a bullying, I mean, I, I don't know, that's, that's hard. <laughs> Kids are just going to, anything that you have that's different than them, they're going to they're gonna pick on you for it. I was too tall. I was the tallest girl in my class. I got picked on for that. So, I mean... Yeah, but Damn there's it, also Mom. the bullying that comes from... So let's say the students find out he's a, uh, an, an atheist, right? There's also the possibility of the principal, the teachers, anyone they finding out... They can't do anything. They can't do anything? No, there's no way. That's totally not legal. But if they give them a hard time about it? But no, that's unprofessional. They could get fired. I mean, like, that's, there's no way a teacher could do something like that. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, if <it> was, <laughs> maybe if it was Mississippi. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. That no, makes it's sense. not legal. I heard a story about a teacher. Oh. 
joining the kids, bullying the kid because she was an atheist. Yeah, I, for, yeah, I forget which state it was. Yeah. They, they did a story on that. It was, <laughs> it was just troubling to watch that. It's sad. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 I'm curious just uh, about um, your feeling towards saying the pledge. Oh, I don't like the under God. I mean, I feel like there's bigger things to worry about, though. I mean, that's, if I could get rid of it, I would. I don't like, um, you know, God on money either. But even Richard actually brought this up. He was like, you know, there are <coughs> worse things to worry about than having it on money. But it, it does make me mad. Like, what? get that, get that shit out there. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't like, I don't like a lot more than that about the pledge, to be honest. I don't feel like you should have to pledge to the flag. Like, that's, you know, we're not a military, you know, I feel like that's like little Nazis or something, you know? It just bothers me to a degree. I mean, yeah, there's, there's reverence and there's respect and you have to appreciate, you know, the veterans and stuff. My grandpa fought in World War II, you know, so I have a, a lot of respect for that kind of thing. But at the same time, you know, if a kid doesn't want to do it, they should be able to not do it. Like, you shouldn't get them in trouble. Because I read an article not too long ago about a kid who didn't want to say it and he got in all this trouble. And it wasn't because of under God, it's just he didn't want to say it. So I mean, he's just being a stubborn kid. But if he doesn't want to, then, I mean, that's his choice, right? Freedom of speech. Um, but under God, I don't like that at all. Because that's, you know, we are not one nation under God. <laughs> yeah, um, you mentioned the, the whole, like, God punishment of, you know, global warming and that. Um, obviously, if you've heard about the situation in the Philippines, mm -hmm. Uh, with the hurricane and the um, uh, the majority of in the Philippines is uh, I think about ninety percent Catholic or something like that. Um, yeah, maybe they picked the wrong God. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, a lot of the hurricanes that go on here in the United States usually hit the Bible Belt. So I I don't if God if the punishment is abortion and gay marriage, he's, this character is hitting the wrong places. They picked the wrong god. <laughs> they should have been praying to the flying spaghetti monster the whole time. Ramen. 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 Speaking of my crazy pastors over there, question. Uh, um, <coughs> what do you have to say about Ray Comfort? Oh, he's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh god, oh, yeah. No, Somebody, uh, by the way, an atheist hacked his Twitter. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, that was true. That was hilarious. Um, yeah. So now he's at Ray Comfort LW or something, Living Waters, which is amazing. Um, I ran into one of his minions, by the way, on Hollywood Boulevard the day they were passing out these like "Are you saved?" pamphlets, and I look at the back and it says "Living Waters." And I was like, yes. Um, <laughs> So, no, yeah, Ray Comfort. I mean, I have a whole video, of, two videos about, three videos about Ray Comfort. Um, yeah, he's a special guy. I think, honestly, I think he's a charlatan. I don't think that he actually believes everything that he says. I think he's doing it um, for the money. So, there's no way he's that stupid. I mean, he's had so many, I listened to a debate online with him uh, in Thunderfoot, and Thunderfoot just ripped him to shreds. Like, just totally demolished every argument he had. And still at the end, he was like, yeah, but God! Like, like over his head, every single word. He, like, he didn't process any of it. He was just, you know. So there's no way that he's actually that stupid. He's just, no, I don't buy it. <laughs> uh, yeah? yeah um, people in the tragedy in the Philippines, and the fact that <coughs> it's a very Catholic nation, a lot of religious organizations have come together and try to give belief and aid to the Philippines. Um, how do you feel about like the net good that does come out of religious organizations? And um, how do you think AIDS could be more prominent in a sort of aid? I don't feel that yeah, the um, community as a whole is not given enough. There aren't a lot of atheists out there. I mean, I, but you do have a good point. Um, in the last video that I posted, um, <coughs> I mentioned the Philippines. I mentioned if you want to donate, I have two links that are secular that you can use to donate. Um, so there's that. Um, and yeah, there are good things that people who are religious do. I mean, there are religious people who are good. <laughs> My family are, they're not a bunch of assholes, you know, my, they're good people. They, uh, they do a lot to help people. They're racist and homophobic, but they are helpful in a lot of other ways. Like, you know, they're not all bad. Um, so yeah, there's, there's people who are religious get together and sometimes they do good things. That's not surprising, but I don't think you need to have religion for any of those good things. So. Okay. Well, if you guys have any more questions, you can come up and ask her after, right? But yeah, I want to. Sure. 
say thanks everyone for coming. Thank you for coming.